This is, today is December 13, 2017. This is the meeting of the CSI uh, implementation group for Kubernetes. Um, let's get started. Uh, today on the agenda, we're going to go over uh, status updates real quick, and uh, I don't think there's much else to discuss. Uh, Luis, do you want to talk about the intent tests? Yes, so I have the intent test working. I, I have uh, just created a PR this morning. Oh, you're kind of low. Oh, sorry. Is this, is this better? Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll just speak louder. <laughs> I think my mic is mic'd up. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I was able to, like I said a few days ago, I had the host path container working. So I needed that to be able to actually use the end-to-end -end test so I can test it with, uh, you know, mounting and unmounting and writing and things like that. So what I did was I, uh, I created it in a way so that it, more other drivers can, can add on. And uh, so right now it's just a host path driver and uh, it, it just kind of you know, sets it up. Then once it's set up, it calls the normal uh, uh, E2E end-to-end uh, volumes provisioning uh, call uh, functions that were written for dynamic provisioning and it, it has a lot of tests to make sure things are written correctly and things like that. So we, it calls that, it takes care of the actual testing and then it comes back with success or failure, so. Sweet, so it exercises the uh, provisioning path and the mount path? That is correct. Cool, because, cool. Because uh, the provisioning uh, uh, function, test function from volume underscore provisioning mm -hmm. uh, takes care of all of that. Nice, and it also tests the attach path because the attach will be a no op, basically. Yes. Great. This is awesome. Thanks yeah, a lot, Luis. No problem. So I think uh, next steps will be to get this merged. I'm not sure whether code freeze has been lifted or not. If it has, then we're going to have to cherry pick it back to 1.9 branch. Yeah. Um, the what we probably want to do is get it merged let the test run for a few days and see if it's stable. Uh, that way we don't have to do multiple cherry picks, uh, but we can figure, sort all that out. Yeah, the only thing is after a couple of things, uh, this uses a, a single pod. That the way we're, this test for the host path, mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that this is the way other things work, but the host path, it, it create, it's, it's, it's like a local volume. Yep. So it, for, it forces everybody to go on the same node. Got it. For, for this test. Second thing is um, I have to enable it externally. There, I, mean, I think uh, I, there's a note there on how to enable it externally. Uh, so even though this will go in, this, it won't be set up. Uh, it won't be running. Uh, so, what do you mean enable it externally? So it, it, if you go up a little bit, I think uh, Michelle says some stuff like, oh, there it is, right, right above. Uh, you passed it. There's a, some, a two links that she gives. Let's see. To enable it in some config.json and test infra. Uh, yeah, go down a little bit. Let's see where it's. It's, it's, uh, it's two down from the first robot comment. <laughs> oh, from the top. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Yeah, right there. Okay. So I that's where I need to enable. So once the test goes in, then the test is not enabled by default okay. because you need to so, make the changes here. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do you plan to do that once this merges? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And uh, and uh, definitely welcome other drivers. Uh, yeah. If you hear other driver developers wanting to add to E2E, let me know and I can help them out how to do it. Cool. So. All right. This looks great. Thank you so much. Yep. No problem. All right. I'm going to mark, uh, well, let's leave it as orange until it merges, but uh, PR is out. That is great progress. Uh, the only other thing, two things remaining, documentation, uh, status updates there, Luis? I haven't done that for the last two days, but okay. that is my 
next thing as I wait for reviews, and I also have to fake. A, looks like a couple of flakes there on the test. Okay. But uh, yeah, that the test, the documentation is my next. My next cool. Time. Looks like good progress. Um, on the volume plugin side, Chakri, any updates? Yeah, I started putting unit tests for a bunch of them, but I still I kind of uh, stalled the GC progress just because like I realized everybody working on it. So okay. I put basic uh, tests for CSA common, and I'm working on the mock interface for the flex adapter. So once that is there, maybe people can use that as a, and uh, add for iSCSI, NFS, and host path. Cool. Yeah. And I have one more thing is like, there are some of the open items, like uh, once this is done, like uh, I was like, what is the people's plan? Like they want to jump on the plugins and then I'm free, like somebody wants to go and add anything in there. We have a lot of validation checks missing in the CSA common because the spec kind of uh, limits the kind of names and uh, valid characters in the name, the length of the names and length of the same parameters. There's a lot of validation code which is required. Mm -hmm. Today we don't do that. So yeah, if somebody wants to take yeah, up any of the work items. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, uh, I uh, proposed the uh, sanity test mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. model and uh, that will definitely, I mean, I. I it doesn't just have to be implementing that, but I just saying that that has the plan is that that will will test for that. So the code itself doesn't do the validation today. If you look at like let's say that if I do a driver create right, the driver takes a name, but is the name conforming to the CSI node name? There is no check for it. Yeah. It so be. typically, if yeah. you look at uh, if you look at Kubernetes, there is something called a validation dot go. Okay. Right. So that's not there today in the plugins. But if somebody wants to pick items like that, I can list them. Somebody wants to pick and work on them. I'm fine with it. But yeah, if not, I can slowly keep on adding the one. But so you one know what we can do is just create a create issues for it. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. Remember, that think, works. Yeah. yeah. Create an issue. And I was thinking we can start a list for items that we're going to need to start tackling for beta. Yes. And also we don't have a clear make or a build system. So I was trying to put it, but everything like which I can come up with, like it looks like a little bit hack rather than a, I know everything is a hack in the make system to Ringo language, but so that's another concern is like a, in the end, if people develop a driver, if they want to deploy one Kubernetes, they should be able to run one command. It'll spit out the YAML files. Yep. So that's another thing, but yeah, if somebody has any other greater plans for that, yeah, but some things like that actually. So yeah. I will open, okay, let me do one thing. I will open issues for all this stuff. And anybody who wants to work on them, they can actually feel free to pick it up. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you so, a, sorry. Go I was going to say, if uh, you put the label help wanted on it, it'll really uh, actually, show, that, show that out, you know, not just you, but you're asking for help to do this and other people in the community will come in and help that. Yeah. I, actually, I like Jan's thing is like a, if we want to do any of this stuff, maybe like this is the time where we can, now the crunch time is over, right? Maybe somebody can write a small proposal. It need not be very exhaustive. Mm -hmm. Small proposal, get feedback, get a little bit thoughts around it so that like we don't have to, and then people will come and say that, oh, I think I want to do it completely differently, right? So, mm -hmm. so that will help, but I, I will add it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, that sounds good. I, I think that leads into planning for uh, Q1. Um, maybe we could do that at some point next week. But let's just get a list started of items uh, required for beta. I will populate this uh, with the list that I have. And I know, Vlad, you've been keeping a list of items as well. Uh, right. Let's just start throwing it in here, and then we could use this as a starting point for uh, figuring out what we want to do for Q1. And if anybody else has items like Chakri, the issues that you open, you could put them here as well. Um, and yeah, uh, okay. I was going to say I opened uh, three, three or four issues yesterday, and I okay. posted them in the working group uh, Slack channel. And basically, three of them has to do with the probe call. And I think that might warrant a further discussion in the CSI design itself, whether or not we want to force the CEO to do a probe call. Mm -hmm. And then the last one has to do with uh, FS group. Um, if we're going to pass that to, uh, to the driver. 
and how we want to pass it. Okay. So they're, they're captured in, 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 in issues. Cool. So uh, issues is where they should be captured. This is just a list of things that we want to make sure that we have one place to look and have a high level view of everything we want to do for next quarter. Uh, we can start planning here. Um, Something else uh, we need to sort out is currently the directory that we have, github.com slash kubernetes-csi is technically not under uh, Kubernetes, uh, which puts it in a legal funky state. Uh, normally, I try to avoid all of this, but uh, uh, we're getting beat up about the container storage interface repo right now by legal. so. We should sort of get ahead of this one before we get beat up on it too. Uh, I'm not sure whether that means we'll have to move to the Kubernetes incubator repo or what. Um, hey, but, so what does that mean to be under Kubernetes? I mean, you're so, fine and you created it. I mean, it seems like that's that should be enough. Yeah. Well, so apparently, uh, it's not like a blanket uh, ownership. There are specific repositories which have uh, specific legal entities that own them. Um, so Kubernetes slash uh, the GitHub repo is owned by the CNCF. Uh, it used to be when it was first created owned by Google and then they signed over ownership. Um, and there's a, a lot of legal mumbo jumbo that I don't understand, but in general, creating uh, random GitHub repos is very frowned upon. Um, especially when the ownership is more than one company, it's unclear who the legal entity is and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so it's best if we get that cleared up. I would like uh, Kubernetes, uh, CNCF to just to say this is another Kubernetes repo so that we don't have to move anything. Um, that way it's officially sanctioned and it's covered by the CNCF CLA. Uh, if we are not allowed to do that, we may have to move to one of the existing, existing sanctioned repos, like the Kubernetes incubator repo, which would be a pain in the butt for us, but we need to sort that out. Well, there, so there, I was just going to say that real quick. There's multiple things in our Kubernetes CSI repo. There are things for Kubernetes, and there's things for CSI. So, and then CSI drivers have nothing to do with Kubernetes. Yeah. So there, there is, uh, I would say there's anything to move to Kubernetes Incubator or anything in the area. It's just the external, the driver registrar, the external provisioner, and the external attacher. Everything yeah. else is a, is a CSI project. Yeah, oh, CSI has the same exact problem yeah. right now because yeah. the container storage interface repo does not have a valid legal entity that owns it. Yeah. Uh, so we're sorting that out on the container CSI side. We're going to have to sort this out on the Kubernetes side. And then... Uh, well, the CSI drivers, we aren't compelled under any organization to have any legal ownership. I mean, we as a team can create those under any umbrella that we want. Uh, we can, but our lawyers will get mad at us. I think if you go talk to the Red Hat lawyers, they'll probably yell at you too. Google. No, they don't care. It's just a oh. spec. Just the CSI spec that we're writing a driver to. Yeah, so uh, another angle, like uh, last week when I was talking at KubeCon, right? So, like, uh, some people said that they don't want, because if the Mesos wants to use it, right? So, how is it going to work then? The drivers are all completely going to be under the Kubernetes. Are so there any? The, these drivers that we have, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, we had this conversation when we first started about where to put drivers. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the concerns that were raised were that we don't want to get into the business of maintaining an arbitrary number of drivers, kind of what happened mm -hmm. in, in the Kubernetes code base, uh, mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, wh wherever the code lands, that uh, the maintainer of that repo ends up being responsible for maintaining it and making sure it's tested and et cetera, et cetera. We said we wanted to get away from that, and therefore we wanted to say whoever you know, is the owner of that volume plugin will host it in their own repository. So Google hosts the uh -huh. GPT one in their own, et cetera, et cetera. So, that so was I'll tell you a practical issue with that. I don't think we need to solve it today, but uh, yeah. the practical issue with that would be like, even though like CSI, uh, CSI defense spec, everybody needs to follow with it exactly. There will be small details like a probe, what uh, um, Vlad pointed out earlier, right? So things like that, might break some plugins and drop right. 
So what would uh, what the spec plans to do before 1.0 is mm -hmm. have a certification suite that okay. can be run against any arbitrary plugin to say okay you have the, your you know your CSI certified or whatever. You know, okay. you know what I oh. suggest is that um, the drivers themselves have nothing to do with CNCF or anything, yeah. and I think the driver vendors, right. if they want to, should get together and create their own area and work together. There's nothing stopping us, me being one of those vendors, there's nothing stopping us from creating our own area and doing whatever we want. Yep. Uh, so okay. Okay. It could be a collaboration between multiple vendors. It could be yeah. individual vendors doing their own thing. It's essentially keep CNCF out of it, keep Kubernetes out of it. Yeah. That way it's the vendors, it's the vendors. who maintain it. Yeah. Well, right. So yeah. we have a repo that we can move the drivers to, no problem. Yeah. Right. There's that CSI volumes thing that's pretty much the storage vendors working together to create CSI drivers. And we can move our Kubernetes stuff to external storage if we want to. Yeah. I, I think that um, may be the best path forward, um, but it'll, it, it, it sucks because then we don't have like one landing place for all of Kubernetes CSI stuff, but that might be a yeah. pill that we need to swallow. Yeah, like like the, right now, documentation is there. Yeah, we'll have to think about where documentation goes and the CSI test stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like the force of is of storage vendors. Uh, we will put out docs and maintain that repo, right? Yeah. I mean, I think you know, I mean, just cutting right to it, like Shakri, Luis, myself, like we all work at storage companies essentially, and I think it's you know would be in our best interest to put out a quality generic driver and you know with the advice of anybody from kubernetes uh you know kind of reviewing it and telling us what's good or bad about it well i think those are the sample drivers already chakri has yeah actually my concern would be like we are more than more of a platform company than a storage right i think even red hat is also similar right so right. I hope you, they're I, both. They're you both. See, I don't want 10 drivers to deal with it. One for one iSCSI, second for <laughs> separate iSCSI driver for pure, separate iSCSI driver for EMC. So, but I agree, actually, if you make it as a separate repo, which will be a little bit controlled by vendors, I don't know. So let's figure it out separately then, okay? Yeah, I think iSCSI vendors should get together and figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it sounds like what we're leaning towards is breaking Kubernetes CSI up, throwing the drivers into volume CSI, which Brad created earlier, and then mm -hmm. hopefully migrating the Kubernetes components into one of the Kubernetes repos. So I can throw all the CSI stuff that I'm working on there too, the CSI test and the, and the doc. The docs, throw them in there too? Because that seems uh, to be like a... If yeah. it's Kubernetes agnostic, like if it has nothing to do with Kubernetes, we should probably keep it in a repo that has nothing to do with Kubernetes and then do a proposal to donate it to the CNCF. Yeah, the, it, it really only has one page that has to do with Kubernetes. Every other thing else is... is uh, in the docs? Yeah. The right? docs should be very, very Kubernetes specific, no? Uh, yeah, it has one area because it's how to deploy in Kubernetes. Oh, no, you're right. But then yeah. the users have to do PVCs. All right. Yeah. So it should be the dogs, but it's a tricky one because once you go to the drivers, yeah. that's how you come to the Kubernetes, right? Or this, uh, yeah. So the way I'm putting it is in the readme, I'm putting a Kubernetes as a, one of the major header. Mm -hmm. And I have a kubectl create, which will do the deploy files. You know, and, I, I yeah. wonder if we can create a sub repository under Kubernetes, like Kubernetes slash CSI. Mm -hmm. And then we can have uh, folders underneath that, directories underneath that for each one of our little uh, external <laughs> containers. And then we could have documentation in there. Uh, yeah. Okay, let me follow up on that and uh, see what uh, what advice we get from the from the, the Kubernetes folks, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, whatever you guys decide is fine with me. All right, cool. Hey, uh, Saad. Yes. The uh, the list the because I'm not in front of my computer the the list of ongoing issues for beta. Do you have uh -huh. that in any any? Uh, I just documents? threw it into the agenda doc. Uh, we're just starting okay, so it, there, and then we can use but it. Did, did you start a spreadsheet already? Uh, I did not. 
Uh, right okay. now, it's just a dumb list in the agenda doc, and then we can promote it to a spreadsheet if needed. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else folks want to talk about? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm here uh, on Friday for the last time this year, and after that, I'm, Chris I'm on Christmas vacation. Okay. All right, so I think now would be a good time to break. We could use Friday for planning Q1, and then we'll take a couple weeks off, and then uh, we can begin again in January. Does that sound mm -hmm. okay? Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, that's right. good for me. Yeah, I'm the same way. Cool. All right, so we'll call Friday the last meeting. We'll do a planning session. Then we'll take a couple weeks off, and then we'll rejoin uh, in uh, January and see where we go. Okay, cool. All right, thanks for all your hard work, people. All right, thanks, all right. guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you, guys. Bye.